Hello folks. So in this video I'm going to be doing a quick review of the Century FC90. It's a 90 amp flux core wire feed welder uh, powered by uh, just standard 120 volts. I'll give kind of an overview, uh, tell kind of what I think of it, and show you some performance results. Now this is a very inexpensive welder uh, and that does show in some of the components and just the the low 90 amp output. But this welder, uh, for the price, does have some definite advantages over uh, similarly priced welders. Main one being this is an inverter welder and it is DC output. Uh, so the inverter technology means that it's fairly efficient so that you can get that, you know, the full rated output out of 120 volt, uh, just standard wall outlet with no problems at all. It also means it is very small and light. Um, I mean, it probably only weighs 10 or 15 pounds. Very compact, very easy to carry around, uh, much smaller and lighter uh, than some of the similar welders like um, you know, the Harbor Freight uh, 90 amp or 125 amp flux core welder or the Forney Easy Weld I reviewed uh, previously or the Lincoln Weld Pack HD that I reviewed previously also. So much smaller than those. And another advantage it has being an inverter welder, while all of those pretty much have uh, an infinitely variable speed for wire feed, this one also has an infinitely variable uh, voltage adjustment. Now that's not going to make a huge difference in terms of you know the maximum thickness you can weld with it or anything you know having that infinitely variable adjustment but if you are trying to weld something thin or you have a real precise project you're trying to do um, it does give you a little bit more flexibility in how you can uh, tune that and you know tweak it in to get the results you want. Now uh, the wire feed gun that it comes with very basic, very, you know, low end, but functional. Uh, it does come with a flux core uh, cap on the end here to kind of protect the threads and all that. Uh, very standard, commonly available contact tips that it comes with. Um, these are the same ones that come on, you know, a lot of the, the lower end Lincoln welders. It comes on the Harbor Freight welder. And, uh, you know, they're available lots of places, all over the place. You can get these contact tips. Very standard, uh, very commonly available. Uh, the power cord is fine. Uh, it's a 14 gauge, but uh, for the output of this welder and the amount of current draw that it has, that 14 gauge should be okay. And uh, one nice thing about this cord is that it's six feet long, which isn't super long, but it is a little bit longer than what comes on some of the, the you know, very least expensive welders, kind of like the Forney Easy Weld, which came with just a very short cord. But also on that welder and on some of the others, the power cord is actually, you know, mounted on the front. It comes out of the front of the welder, which kind of limits, you know, how far you can have it from the wall. Uh, this one, it's a six-foot cord, and it does come out of the back of the welder. Not a huge difference, but, you know, if you just want to really get this thing as far away from the wall as possible, uh, that can help. But I've also run this welder off of an extension cord, and it ran just fine. You definitely don't want to push it to super long length, and you don't want to use a really small extension cord, but just being the inverter technology a little bit more efficient, and just because it, it is pretty limited in output, you should be okay running a short extension cord as long as you use you know, a, a fairly heavy duty one. Now the work clamp cable is just fine. It's also six feet long as is the uh, main uh, gun cable here. Uh, but one one kind of a miss is the very, very cheap work clamp here. Uh, it's just kind of a standard, um, you know, very low cost, just stamped steel, uh, you know, no fancy jaw strap or, you know, copper insert, inserts or anything like that. Just a very cheap standard clamp. Uh, it does work okay. And I will be using it for the review because that's what it comes with. Uh, but for me personally, um, I would prefer a little bit better clamp than this. And on the front of the welder here, not a lot to it. You just have your adjustment knob for voltage and your adjustment knob for wire speed. And on the top of the welder, you have a little door that opens up to access the wire spool and the feed mechanism. There's just a little spring-loaded latch here, and that lifts up. And then on the inside of the door, you have your chart with uh, you know your output settings for different thicknesses of material. And then just a real simple guide for how to set up the wire feed mechanism and uh, how to change the contact tip, that kind of thing. The wire drive system is just a fairly standard plastic setup, pretty typical of these inexpensive flux core welders. Very basic and simple, but um, I've had essentially the same thing on several welders now, and they do work just fine. You know, maybe long term they won't hold up quite as well as some of the metal drive systems. You know, they're not quite as, you know, industrial as that, you know, being plastic, but I found that they work okay and they hold up well enough. Now this is wire I had. One thing to note, this welder does not come with a lot of accessories or extras. 
it does not come with any wire. So most of the welders are just going to come with a sample spool anyways. So it's no huge loss, but just keep in mind uh, when you get this machine, it's not going to even have a sample spool of wire in it. You're going to have to pick up some, some wire to use the machine. And one potential downside of this, you know, very small form factor in this welder uh, is that this is just kind of the standard four inch spool that you can get, you know, at hardware stores and that kind of thing. But if you wanted to use the larger 10 pound spools, they will not fit in this machine. Back of the welder, not too exciting. Uh, power cord comes out, power switch, and cooling fan. And also you have the data tag of the machine here, uh, which does show the duty cycle at various outputs. And this machine is rated at a 90 amp max output, but it does show here a 30% duty cycle at 80 amps at 18 volts. So if you were running it at 90 amps, you can figure it's going to be less than that, you know, maybe 15 or 20%. And uh, just to give you a little bit better idea of the size of this machine, I mean, you can see I can, I can, you know, just about pick it up just like that without uh, any handle or anything. And it did actually come with a strap. I didn't put it on there. There's actually a little bit of an overhang to this plastic right here. And I can just, I can just pick it up just like that. It almost works like a handle and then I don't need a, a strap or anything like that. So very small, very lightweight machine, very portable, easy to move around the shop, easy to you know throw in the trunk of a car or something like that. So that's that, that's the welder. Uh, now let's do a little bit of welding with it and see how it goes. All right, so I've done some welding. Phone going off. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> All right, so I've done some welding with the machine and I think it does a pretty darn good job. I didn't do any cut and etching today, but I can insert some footage from a previous video that uh, I did do a little bit of cut and etching with this machine uh, just to show the penetration and um, it does pretty decent even on 3 16th material. Now, you know, just being just a tiny little 90 amp flux core welder, 120 volt. Uh, it's not really ideal for 3 16 material, uh, but in a pinch, depending on the project, depending on the joint configuration and that kind of thing, uh, it can do it. Um, you know, like a lot of flux core welders, um, you know, it does get a little bit more penetration than you would with, you know, like a, a gas shielded MIG uh, at, a, at a given power output. The arc itself is not the smoothest on any machine I've used. Uh, but, you know, for a $200 machine, it's really not bad at all. A little bit harsher than some machines, but a lot smoother than any of the AC output machines. And definitely very usable, even on some pretty thin stuff. I didn't use it on any super thin material, uh, but here is a weld you can see I did on uh, 1 16th inch thick steel. And uh, turned basically all the way down, it does pretty decent. This was with the wire feed speed set to 1, and the voltage set to about 2 to 2.5. Two and at that setting, uh, it went along pretty smooth and uh, laid in there pretty nice. Uh, you can see I missed a couple spots of slag. Didn't clean these up perfect, but you get the idea. Uh, on 16th inch material, it ran pretty good. Uh, you can see it was just starting to uh, get a little bit too hot right at the end. Um, if you were, if I was going to do this again, and I, um, you know, this was just a test piece, but you know, if this was a real project, what I would have wanted to do is stop maybe in the middle and then let it cool a bit and then start at the end and then work back to the middle again because when you start on one end and work all the way across the heat has built up so much by the time you get to the end that uh, you can see it wanted to uh, kind of burn through right at the end even with the welder set almost as low as it goes now for a butt joint or a outside corner joint it was 
um, you know, basically I had to just almost do a series of tacks because it was wanting to burn through pretty bad, even, even on that low of a setting. So not the easiest thing for thin material, but, uh, down to 16th of an inch, definitely very, you know, very usable. Now the infinite adjustability on the voltage and wire feed speed is nice. It allows you to really get it dialed into where you want it. But keep in mind that also means that you may have to uh, do a little bit of tweaking and stuff to get it to run uh, just exactly the way you want it. I found that the recommended settings on the chart inside the machine ran okay. Um, and you know, if you just set it to that and go, it would be okay on thicker material, but on thinner material, it was way too hot. Um, I think for 16th inch material, it said something like, um, like around a six on both settings. And I was blowing, blowing straight through uh, 16th inch at that setting. Like I said, I had to have it turned almost all the way down. So maybe not quite as simple to just set and go as, you know, the ones that have just a couple positions for wire feed speed and, you know, high and low on voltage, but you do have a lot more flexibility in the adjustment on this machine. The fan on this welder does run all the time. You know, you turn it on and the fan runs. That's really not surprising on, uh, you know, this low cost of a machine, but just something to keep in mind. But the fan noise wasn't too bad at all. Sometimes on these smaller machines, they have a real small fan, so it runs at high RPM and you get kind of a high pitched whine and it can be a little bit more annoying. Uh, I didn't find that with this one at all. The fan noise didn't bother me a bit. I ran the welder off of a 20 amp circuit. I didn't trip any breakers or have any kind of issues. Uh, it ran fine the whole time. One thing I did notice about the arc uh, is it, it tended to kind of surge up and down just a tiny bit. At least the sound of it did. Didn't really seem to affect the way it welded. I mean, it seemed to weld fine and it, the surging kind of noise kind of came and went, but it just seemed like that pitch of the hiss was kind of going up and down some of the time while I was welding. So uh, take that for what it is, which basically is almost nothing because it didn't seem to hurt anything, but it was just something I noticed. Typically when I've, uh, you know, heard that kind of going up and down like that on another welder, um, it kind of indicates, um, you know, a feeding issue, maybe the, uh, you know, maybe the wires hanging up in the liner or something like that, or the, the drive is slipping a little bit, um, you know, and causing kind of an inconsistent feed speed but that didn't seem to be the case on this one because like I said, it didn't really seem to affect the weld itself. And, um, you know, I adjusted tension and I checked a lot of things and uh, everything seemed to be running fine, but just, you know, I just kind of noticed that. As mentioned before, the work clamp is pretty cheap, uh, but it did work fine for the welding that I was doing. Again, this is a pretty low output welder, so um, you're not really putting a huge demand on this clamp. Um, I did use this for all the testing and it did work okay. The spring is, is fairly stiff and one thing that I do like is that the jaws close uh, tight and pretty straight all the way across. So when you clamp it onto a piece, it's not like I've seen some where they have the jaws are so crooked that when you clamp it, you're really only hitting on just like one tiny little corner. This one's pretty straight and the spring is fairly stiff. So um, it actually works pretty good for what it is. Same thing with the MIG gun, nothing special, but uh, work just fine for what it is. So if you're looking for a fairly inexpensive uh, flux core, 120 volt welder, um, I, I would recommend this one. It runs pretty good. It has DC output. The arc is okay. And uh, the output actually seems fairly strong for its uh, size and rated output. And again, I think one of the big benefits of this machine is just the size and weight. You know, if you're lo looking for something just to throw in the back of the car or truck to, you know, be able to take somewhere to um, do, you know, repairs out in the field or something like that, this is an excellent candidate just because it is just super small and light. Build quality and fit and finish isn't super spectacular, um, but the knobs are smooth. They feel pretty sturdy. Um, you know, everything works fine. The drive system works fine. The little latch on the door on the top, um, that works pretty good too. So in use, um, you know, nothing stood out as being, you know, annoying or a pain. Very simple to set up, very simple to use. And uh, so far works great. If you have any specific tests or anything specific you want me to try with this welder, uh, just go ahead and let me know. In the meantime, that's my take on it. Pretty decent little machine. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, post them up down below. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.